So a few days ago, somebody in the YouTube comments mentioned to me that apparently a lot of types of insects don't flap like birds, like my previous ornithopters have, but rather in this seesaw motion. Somehow this fact had eluded me. I guess I just never paid that much attention to how insects move their wings. Uh, but it actually has some really interesting consequences. The big immediate one is that it means that the blades no longer produce pitch torque on the ornithopter at all, no matter how far apart they are. And this will, in fact, serve to completely cancel pitch, move, or, uh, pitch oscillations. You can see immediately that the ornithopter is much, much more steady than it used to be. And we can go quite a bit further. Right now, we've traded the pitch oscillation for a slighter yaw oscillation. And the reason for that is because the wings on this are trimmed up in dihedral in order to clear the ground, and that prevents them from truly opposing each other because the torque is being applied at different points. I don't have an easy way to draw on the screen, but when the wing is coming to its lowest point, that, that torque of changing the, the, uh, the blade direction happens at like negative 5 degrees, and on the other side it's happening at like positive 25. So you get a bit of yaw because the torque isn't properly cancelled. If we even them perfectly, you'll see that the shake is entirely eliminated. And like this, we can obtain an ornithopter that's basically as steady as a jet would be. And as I've suggested in showing you this, the limitation of a design like this, and what I think will prevent me from using it in all ornithopters going forward, is that it really doesn't support uh, dihedral in the, in, the, in the wings. They have to be perfectly level. At least they have to be perfectly level in order to truly have no shake. Otherwise, you just trade pitch oscillation for yaw and roll oscillation. And on something like the Mariposa, that isn't really possible because the lower wing set, which is down there to deal with the thrust line offset, will uh, it, it, it has to be trimmed up. So it will it will shake, and it's probably better to leave it as it is. Ornithopter in this configuration, the seesaw motion is way better. Absolute world of difference. I'll show you I'll show you the Mariposa with this configuration. I did change it just to just to test that's yeah, because I didn't do my wing offsets to clear the ground actually we'll use this one so this is the Mariposa with the seesaw motion and because it's got this lower wing, and the wing is down there to correct the thrust line, it makes the takeoff behavior a lot more controllable and domestic. But it means it really has to be trimmed up like that. And this might give you a bit better of an idea of why this produces shake in, in a dehedral ornithopter configuration. I, I really wish that I could diagram. I should probably go out of my way to learn how to do that in video editing, but I just don't do enough of these. So you'll see as I throttle up, we still have the much nicer takeoff behavior of the Mariposa, but we've traded the pitch oscillation for this, this yaw roll oscillation. And it probably is maybe a little bit less than the pitch oscillation used to be. It definitely isn't much less, but it seems a lot less pleasant. If I have to pick between this and a little bit of pitch oscillation, I'll take the little bit of pitch oscillation. But, of course, on an ornithopter that doesn't require dihedral, we can have our cake and eat it, too, and have a perfectly rock-steady ornithopter. I am fairly confident that I can design a new ornithopter based specifically around this seesaw motion and achieve performance far above what we just saw in the Meadowhawk. I think I can actually achieve nearly VTOL with that, uh, because it means I no longer have to worry about pitch inputs from the blades coming down, so I can actually bring them down perfectly level. And that will give me performance akin almost to uh, not not really a true VTOL, but to stole performance, kind of like a channel wing aircraft, where a huge amount of the lift is is directed downwards. So I and I think I can do it in a package almost as small as the Meadowhawk, probably as small as the Meadowhawk. This seems to be about the minimum length of a wing. Actually, the Meadowhawk's wings are a little bit shorter. This is a 
about as short as you can get the wing, in, in my experience. So I can make something about this size that is probably nearly VTOL and perfectly steady, as long as I can come up with a good way of dealing with these ground clearance problems, and that might just involve changing the stroke and maybe dealing with a little bit of, of shake during takeoff. But anyway, huge thanks to the guy who mentioned the seesaw thing, because that's basically revolutionized this all over again. And hopefully I will see you guys in a bit with something that works way better than anything we've seen before.